what have we been doing? So the machine's been a slow burner, yeah? It's something I have no idea about. What am I actually doing? So I've been going through this bit by bit. There's been loads of little bits to work out, loads of little components to make, loads of brackets to 3D print, learning curves with loads of different bits on here. Um, tables on. We have um, our e-stops on our working. So we've actually, I say we, me and Steve, the electrician, but not electrician, he's actually, uh, what do we call him? He's like... Okay, so if you don't know what a feral is, it's not a wild cat. It is one of these little things. So this is basically the end of the brown wire put inside a nice and neat housing. So what they look like from scratch is like this. We can zoom in on that. So that's what they look like. They have a little hole in, and they come in different sizes, so you can get your biggest ones, which are this big, fit in huge cables, or you can get these little ones, fit in small cables. And just to show you, um, how easy that is. This is the tool we use to attach the ferrules. Literally put the metal end in the tool, hold it with the tool, and then we're going to do the brown one first. Put that end into the ferrule, and then squeeze it tight. And that's literally it. Do a little tug test, but yeah, that's all good. So we've got to repeat that for the other ones. I like to twist these cables just before they go in because they can fray a little bit. Anyway, so they're all done. All I've got to do, and I'll show you how these Wagos work. So I need the brown one. Just goes in the Wago, all the way to the end. You can actually see through these, I can't flip it over currently. You can just flip it in and it's done. Just finished all the wiring, all the home sensors are in, the e-stop's rewired, I had a bit of an issue where the e-stop was constantly active. Turns out there's a couple of cables to swap over on the relay. Uh, Omic sensor for this, obviously it doesn't matter right now, but I've got a pin cable so I can identify it really easily, blah blah blah. Left all the way goes on, put a few way goes on down there. I've extended the cables I said I was going to extend, and also we now need to check that the y axis motors are moving in opposing directions because when they come out, they need to be moving in opposing directions as well. So, basically, I'm going to take the gantry off, and I'll show you how that works right now. Really simple. Um, there's a couple of stops on these linear rails, so I'm going to get into that now. Nothing's broke. Nothing's broke. These stops are not on, off even. They turn freely. Right. Let's get you over here so you can have a look. Right, can you see that? Not really. Right. I'm going to turn it on. Turn it on. Open this up. Have a little look. Right, so we're going to turn it off quick. Connect all these power supplies. All the steppers. Steppers are powered. I've just got to turn the main power on. This will be the first time that I've powered up the drivers that run the steppers. So the reason I've disconnected most stuff is so there's no massive issues. The only issue I can see realistically is if this starts moving. So I'm going to need to sort that out first because that's actually sitting on that Z axis. Uh, what can I do to make this less sketchy? Right, I worked it out. I've took out, I've took out 
the X and the Z plugs for the drivers so I can test the Y axis and then I can chuck it back on. That's the plan. Right, turn it on. Boom, on. We on. We on? We're on. Right. Test out the Y then. Flip to reset. Connect in. No, don't want to update. Right, we're going to check the Y axis. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, we need to reset. No. So you can see we have movement. And then right and left are all working. Had a minor issue with homing on this uh, Y axis proxim sensor and my other sensors are running head on um, like this and this one is going back and forward so glancing this and I think where it's shooting past it a little bit it's causing an error got the movement complete on a plasma table now the next step so we can get the actual plasma cutter wired up uh, and test out how it's working is to put some slats in the water table worried that I might have done this bit wrong so I'm going to put them in uh, just to sort of have a play around with the plasma but I'm going to ask for some advice on the forums because the issue I might have is that it needs to be level all the way around I'm not sure okay. 